These woods are an example of what can be accomplished without man's interference. This forest, away from any town or communal society, is as untouched by man as any mass of green can be. It would be easy to mistake an area like this as a place of solitude and silence. That is not the truth. Here, there is no substantial evidence of civilization but that does not mean it is without life. Wind and water fill the amphitheater with motion and meaning. Endless chatter of woodland beings permeates within this arborous cathedral. These are not idle conversations. It is an opera, a symphony, a concerto of unification, perfectly executed by design. There is no explanation for how these beings coexist. There is no reason to know why. Within these trees, among these streams, life is. And that is good enough. Nature is not entirely benevolent, and yet this does not take away from its beauty. Animals are hunted and eaten alive, with no knowing of anything outside of this forsaken wood. Human life is very much the same. Every day is lived knowing that any moment could be your last. But it is assumed that now is not that moment. Today is not that day. There is a desire to strive for significance. But in the end, every day ends just the same. These vicious beings live doing what they must do to survive, even if it means the end of another creature's life. Does this make them any different than the small rodents? burrowing its home within the confines of a tree to seek shelter from the outside world. Even something as beautiful as a flower can be subjected to draining the essence of other greenery to stand a little bit taller and glow a little bit brighter. There is a cruelty in nature that brings about destruction. And yet, this forest still stands. Life carries on, even if it's not the life that came before. Part of the forest lies a massive, ever-reaching oak, as large as a hill upon a mountain. Standing alone and apart from the rest of the forest, encircled by still water, the trunk of the behemoth is impossibly thick, able to withstand the elements for the centuries it has stood here. The stoic branches do not sway like the other trees within the wind. 
Night is everlasting beneath the countless branches. No light permeates the endless leaves. There is one thing that this beast of a structure exacts more than any other being on this planet. It endures. It endures the frost of the winter, the storms of the spring, the scorch of the summer, and the collapse of autumn. It endures the loneliness from being different and unyielding. The tree grows taller and stronger with each year, but never closer to the others that surround it. The other trees live, and they will surely die. But this monolith remains to stand the test of time. Streams cut into the wooded area like capillaries, carrying the essence of life from the top of the hills to all the organs of the forest. The streams swiftly scour the mountainside to ensure the continuation of this Eden, ceaselessly palpitating the blood of the earth. Unlike a standard circulatory system, the cycle of this network of vitality does not return to its source. It only travels downward into the endless expanse of the sea to nevertheless return as droplets in the rain. Following the streams is a sure way to reach the colossal peak if one were not to worry about the definitiveness of gravity. There is only one way to reach that height so directly, and it requires wings. Without a transport of such convenience, one must move onward into the dense arteries of the mountain, where the sun is no longer your companion, and the loneliness truly sets in. The dark takes over, and there is nowhere else but forward. There is no more going back. 